I am standing on the roof of the Aventi office and here we have mounted um, a roadside unit uh, and this roadside unit is communicating with um, the entire area around here so we have Circle K over there and we, we do a lot of testing on this road here and uh, we have also mounted a roadside unit on this building way over here which you can see here so that's the Aventi building over there and uh, like I mentioned we have one roadside unit uh, on the roof and then uh, we have another roadside unit uh, on the on the top of this building and uh, here is the uh, Aventi car and, uh, and I've installed the, uh, the CITS antenna on the roof the cable comes in here and it's plugged into this uh, onboard unit the onboard unit has um, OBD uh, CAN bus connection that goes into the diagnostic port under here the um, and then we have this uh, Bluetooth dongle which is talking to the uh, the Android up here so here I can see my own vehicle is this uh, blue one here and then I can see the the two uh, roadside units uh, I can also see this on my laptop here which I brought with me So here I see my my car, and then I have the two um, roadside units. So this is the central ITS server. Over here in this picture, I have the Datex node with the traffic node from Saturn Svevesen. So uh, when I create their messages in this vehicle here, they will show up on the central ITS server, and then they will be transferred over to the Datex server or the Datex node, and then they will show up here in traffic node. Uh, for the first test I'll drive over to this building over here and, and the skating rink and I'll be rolling down the hill here to test the um, slippery road. It's summertime but uh, we'll pretend that it's wintertime and slippery. Now we will test category A, temporary slippery road. I will roll down this hill uh, between uh, 10 kilometers per hour and 30 kilometers per hour. Then I will rev my engine to above 2500 RPM and um, that should trigger a slippery road dem message. I'm above 10 kilometers per hour. I rev the engine. We got one there. And I'll do it one more time down here. We got one there. Let's do it one more time. So there we go. And uh, then we'll have to wait and see when these show up on the um, Datex server. have one on the Datex server and there we have all three showing up on the Datex server so that concludes this test Now we'll test uh, category B, obstacle on the road. Uh, and two of those uh, dem messages we will trigger manually. So I'll click on the plus symbol here. Oops, and I click on the plus symbol there. And then I'll select the incident type. I can select from this list here, but right now I'll just type in the number. 10, zero, submit. And I can pick a location. 
So I'll just place it down here in that corner of the lot. And I click submit. So now we got the uh, demo message here. And that of course shows up instantaneously on the um, central ITS server. And now we'll see when it shows up on the Datex server. There it is. It showed up on the Datex server. So now if I look on this here, I can just click on it. So that's uh, obstacle on the road. And that says unavailable because I didn't put the, the sub course code, just zero. And if I click on this one here, it says pretty much the same thing, obstruction on the road. I will do that one more time. I'll just drive further up here, move to another spot. And then I'll uh, trigger a uh, time message. Incident type. Again, I could pick from this list, but I will just type in the number 10, and this time I'll do four. Submit. And now I'll just leave it at location of the vehicle and I click submit again. So there it is. I'll just move the vehicle so we can see it. So the message showed up here on my Android and it uh, showed up here on the uh, central ITS server and it also showed up here on the uh, um, traffic no via the Datex. For this nest test, I've installed one more uh, onboard unit and I put the antenna back here. So, uh, and I still got the one in the front here. So now I got two onboard units pretending to be two vehicles. And you can see that here I have, um, I have two uh, symbols for a vehicle here. They're a little bit on top of each other. You can see it here too. Let's zoom in. Oops, there you can see I have two two vehicles and I will be driving down here in, in, in a roundabout and um, I will drive slowly and then we'll see that there are two two vehicles driving slowly meaning there's a there's a queue there's a traffic congestion and uh, then the, the roadside unit on top of the building will trigger a dem message and this dem message will be sent from the central ITS server to the date text node and then show up in traffic NOAA. We will do one more test with the obstacle on the road. In this case, it will be a traffic congestion. So now currently I have two onboard units in this car. So it looks like I am driving two vehicles. And when these two vehicles slow down, it will register as a traffic congestion by the roadside unit. Coming down here now. <clears throat> and I'll make a left here. And then I will slow down by that uh, pedestrian crossing. And that will be detected as uh, two vehicles slowing down. So we have a traffic congestion, which will create a dead message. And there we see the dead message. And if I speed up, I will send a new message to reset it. Now it's reset. And then this uh, dead message will be picked up by the uh, Datex server. I will slow down here at the end. And that will create another dead message. There we 
we have a dem message and uh, they will disappear when I leave this area and it will be reset. There we see those two dam messages have been picked up as state text messages and displayed on the traffic ignore. The next test is category C unprotected uh, accident area and uh, this one again will just uh, uh, trigger it manually here we will pretend I have crashed my car right now and the airbag is uh, activated and that would send off a, a dem message uh, of type uh, 27 to 7 and I'll just put it right here where I'm parked and then we see this uh, dem message shows up here on the central ITS server. I crashed my car. And then eventually it will show up on the Datex server over there. There it is. There is on the Datex server. So if I click on this one here. It says uh, accident, unsecured accident. And if I click on one over here, oops, unprotected, no, it says unprotected accident area. The next one we'll try is uh, category D, short term uh, roadworks. And uh, again, that's simply, simply going to be me entering it manually here. So I'll do the plus. And I'll create an incident type. This is going to be 3 4. 3 4. Submit and I'll just uh, select location. I'll just place it uh, here in the corner. Submit and then it shows up there. And then we'll see when it shows up on the Datex server. There it is. There we have uh, short-term roadworks. I can click on this one here. Bring it in here. Short-term stationary roadworks. And this one here says maintenance work. Close enough. The final test is going to be <clears throat> category F, uh, wrong way driver. So right down here by the roundabout, we've set up a little geofence. And when I drive into that geofence, the, the roadside unit on the roof of the Aventi building will detect that the cam messages has GPS coordinates that are going in the wrong direction. So when I get, in, get into this area here where the road works, actually, uh, it will trigger a wrong way driver that message. So there we have the wrong way driver that message. And 
then that will be sent to the DATEX node and shown in uh, traffic mode. We have another test area further up here. There it is in the traffic mode. And we've done the same when I uh, <clears throat> When I get on the ramp to the freeway, we put the wrong way driver for getting onto the freeway. So when I get out of this roundabout and onto the ramp here, we should get the wrong way driver as well. We have it, wrong way driver, that message. And there it shows up uh, in traffic norm as a date text message. So that worked beautifully. Then I'll take everything for a spin since I'm already in the car. And uh, I want to test those two uh, roadside units to see their reception and distance and so on and so forth.